Well, as a numbers guy, objectively, um, even if these studios are having a rough go in terms of their stock price, like that, they they can afford uh, to compensate folks at higher levels. I mean that that's objective. Well, uh, some of their uh, executives are making a lot of money. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and some of these companies now have had massive run-ups. Even Netflix, which I just described, I mean, you know, they're they're still in the hundreds of billions of dollars in terms of uh, values, evaluation. Uh, which uh, you know now it's a little bit lower than it was you know like 18 months ago, but um, but it's still plenty in the scheme of things. So who is on the other side of this negotiation? When you think of studios, uh, is it uh, and and how does that negotiation work on their side? Well, so I'm not in those negotiating committees. I just know what I what I know from the outside. But the studios they band together under an umbrella that they call the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, the AMPTP. And so these are ordinarily their competitors any other time of the year. They're always trying to take market share away from each other. But every three years, they they band together to negotiate as one because it gives them strength. Uh, and so that's who we're negotiating against. And was it the case that one reason the writer's strike uh, ended last time was like one of the studios came forward and said, OK, we'll mm-hmm. cut this deal? Yes, yeah, so that's what that's how you... Uh, because, you know, the Guild, we're like 9,000 writers. So how do you possibly stand up against these multinational conglomerates? Like, it's it, they're, they're so big and strong, and we're just a handful of writers. And so the tactic last time uh, was that you really just get them to turn against each other because they're natural, <laughs> they're natural competitors. They're they little Game like, of Thrones action. Yeah, they don't, they don't like each They're not best friends. And so... Uh, when you when the strike is happening, they don't they can't make content. They're just sitting on their hands watching their stock stock prices go through the floor, and they can claim they have a different business model. But no, their bo- the business model is, manu- is producing and selling television shows across the world. And so the last strike, uh, one of them stepped forward. It, it was United Artists, I think, was the first one that stayed after like two or th- two months of the strike. They came to the writers' school and said, "Okay, let's let's hammer this out and make a deal, an interim deal." And they proposed terms that were much more favorable to the writers with the condition that once the final deal was settled, that's the deal they would take. But then they had a competitive advantage over the other studios because now they're wow. back in the business of making TV shows and, and, and sure. movies. And so that's how you do it. You turn them against each other. Wow. Who's the <laughs> weak link this time? Who's the United <laughs> Artists of 2023? Yeah, United Artists was for, And then uh, maybe Letterman, maybe Worldwide Pants may have been first. I don't remember. And then... Also, Lionsgate, they were among the first to, to uh, you know, to drop. And then it's like dominoes because now they have an advantage over the others. Because, you know, they, they want to make TV shows. It is like the herd, man. You got to pick the weakest one. Yeah. Like the, the one that, <laughs> that really desperately wants uh, to steal a march on the others. Mm-hmm. So just look up the studios by market cap, find the lowest one, and then everyone shows yeah. up the door and be like, hey, we got a bunch of writers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, I, I see where they're coming from. I, I don't hate them. They're they're prioritizing their job, which is maximize profits, and they're not looking after me. I don't, that's not their job. I don't expect them to. So the writers have to look after ourselves. And at the end of the day, we want we want the same thing that they want, which is they want to make boatloads of money, and we want to be the people who make them that boatloads of money. Right? That's it. We just want to be able to afford to be able to do that. Hey, YouTube, glad you're enjoying the podcast. If you really like it, hit subscribe, and then YouTube will notify you every time we have a bang-up new guest. Thank you.